Okay, so we've got the 2017 exam. You're doing question 8. Accurately sketch the quadratic form x squared plus z squared minus 2xy plus 2yz equals 0 by orthogonally diagonalizing an appropriate matrix. Okay, so it's what well, it's. Oops, sorry, it's x squared plus z squared minus 2xy plus 2yz. So we're looking at orthogonally diagonalizing. Sketch x squared. What's it? I always forget it. I'm sorry. x squared plus z squared. Squared plus z squared minus 2xy minus or plus 2yz equals 0. Yes, okay. So we want to sketch this by authority of the right matrix. So the first thing is that this can be written in a vector matrix form as x transpose times by some matrix. Ah, let me call the matrix A times by x. And there's no terms of just x, x. There's no terms of just x or just y or just z. So there's nothing else to put apart from the other side, which is the zero. Okay. What is the matrix A? So the x x that's one y y zero z squared 1, xy is minus 2, so that needs to be minus 1, minus 1, yz is 2, so that needs to be 1, 1, and the other, you know, xz is 0, so it's 0 like that. Okay, so here's this symmetric matrix. We need to orthogonally diagonalize it. So first of all, we need some eigenvectors. Actually, before that, even though we need some eigenvalues. Okay, so we're going to be solving the characteristic polynomial. So it's going to be like this. Uh, okay, so let's let's compute this with Gaussian Gauss reduction. I think so. What can we do to make this simpler? We could add row two to row one. So we can make row one become row one plus row two. No, that's not good. That won't be good. Sorry. Um, maybe rather. Ah, yes, add row 3 to row 1. Okay. And then row 1 will become 1 minus lambda. Oh, sorry. Row 1 will become... Row 1 will become 1 minus lambda, 0, 1 minus lambda. So you can factor out the 1 minus lambda from it. And you're going to get... Top will become 1, will be 1, 0, 1 now. And he's left the same things elsewhere. Okay. Now we could, can we get a row of zeros somehow? I mean, a, a row with a row or column with, with mostly zeros in it? Uh, yes, if we add, add, make row 2 into row 2 plus row 1. So add row 1 to row 2. Okay, then I won't change the determinants, but, oh, I forgot the 1 minus lambda at the front. 1 minus lambda at the front. But row 2 will now be... 0, minus lambda, 2. Uh, wait, why did I do that? That's not going to help, is it? Why did I do that? Why would I do that? Row 2 plus row 1. No, that's not going to help. Yes, it is. It's going to make the first column be mostly, mostly zeros. 1, 0, 1. Row 2 becomes... Now becomes 0, minus lambda, 2. And row 3 is the same. Okay, so now we can expand down the first column to calculate the determinants. And you get the cofactor then of that entry, which is just that. Okay, uh, is this, can we make a simplification here? If you add, maybe you subtract. What happens if you, sub if you subtract row 2 from row 1? No, maybe you subtract row 1 from row 2, you're going to get, I think that, yeah, I think that will help. Let's go, so let's go row, make, make row 2 into row 2 minus row 1. What's going to happen then? We're going to get yeah, the 1 minus lambda still, but now we have, here we have 1 plus lambda. Um, and here we have minus 1 minus lambda. 
Mm. Yes, good. And here we have minus lambda 2 still, right? Minus 1 minus lambda, 1 plus lambda, yes, okay. So now you can factorize out um, minus 1 minus lambda from that bottom row, and it will become minus 1, 1, and then you have minus lambda, and you have the 2 still. Okay, now you can just calculate this what's left, what this term to what's left. So you have 1 minus lambda minus 1 minus lambda, and then what is left is going to be minus lambda minus minus 2, minus lambda plus 2. So that's 2 minus lambda. Okay, so the eigenvalues will be, should be 1 minus 1 and 2. Okay, so now we need to calculate the eigenvectors. So that involves solving the characteristic equation for each of those eigenvalues. So let's do, just call the first eigenvalue 1. And we want to type the eigenvector, so we've got to look at the characteristic. We've got to look at this. Uh, we look at this matrix here, and we. But now for lambda, we use one, so you're going to get zero. Oh, oops, you're going to get zero. Um, minus one. One minus one is zero. Okay, times that eigenvector should equal zero. Okay, so let's. And solve this uh, by Gauss reduction again. So we could do row 1 could become row 1 plus... Yeah, row 1 could have row 3 added to it. And row... Yeah, and row 2 could have row 3 added to it as well. Okay. And then the equation would become 0, 0, 0, minus 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Okay. Uh, is there more we can do? Yes, we could times, we should times row 2 by minus, okay. And we could do some swaps, swap some rows. I can't be bothered to detail exactly which rows it is. But you swap some rows around, it doesn't really matter because the right hand side is zero, and you also multiply that row two by a negative, so you get one zero one at the top, and then zero one zero, and then zero zero zero. Okay. So now this says that a suitable V one would be um, could be V one could be, for example, um, free variable there, and then a zero here, a second a second row zero, and the first row minus one times the third row. Okay, so V1 is, we should check it. So minus 1, 0, 1, is that, minus 1, 0, 1, is that really an eigenvector with eigenvalue 1? So you do that multiplication, what do you get? You get minus 1, you get 1 plus 1, oh, damn it. You get 1 plus 1, so that's not right. Is that, so is that the A correct? Yz are plus, so that's Yz. Mm, so what have we tried with 1, 0, minus 1 is dead? You're going to get 1. You're going to get minus 1, minus 1. No. What have we tried with 1, 0, 1 is dead? You're going to get... 1, and then you're going to get 0, and then you're going to get 1. So that would work. So 1, 0, 1 would work. So you, maybe we made a mistake in our redu gas reduction. Yes, we did. That would be a minus there. We times that row by a minus. We left out a minus. Okay, so it's actually just 1, 0, 1. Okay. That's why you always check. Okay, so we've got an eigenvector. got that eigenvector is correct with an eigenvalue of 1. Okay, so now we want to do this next eigenvalue, so let's say that lambda 2 is the one, what was the next eigenvalue we got? I think it was minus 1. Yep, minus 1. Okay, so if minus 1, now the equation, oop, the equation becomes, okay, so 2 minus 1, 0, 2 minus 1, 0, then minus 1, 1, 1, minus 1, 1, 1, then 
zero one two. Okay. Zero one two. Okay. So we've got to solve this with class reduction. So we could start up by doing adding two times row two to row one. Um, let's leave it at that for now. Okay, so that would give us zero. Um, minus one plus two is one. Zero plus two is two. And then here we'd have, oh, let's at the same time, let's times row two by negative. So we get one minus one minus one in row two, and row three is still zero, one, two. Okay. Now, next class reduction step, we could do row three minus row one. Um, and let's also do row two plus row one. Okay. So then we're going to get zero, zero, zero on the bottom. We're going to get one, zero, one, second row, and zero, one, two is the first row. V2 equals zero. Uh, and then we do some swaps, swap some rows, never mind which ones, and you get. One zero zero one one zero one zero one two zero 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 is zero. Okay. So we now can read off the solutions for V two. So a V two could be um, free variable there, and the second row is minus two times that variable, and the first row is minus one times that variable. So minus one minus two one. Let's check it. Minus 1, minus 2, 1. Okay, so what you get when you times a by minus that, that vector, minus 1, minus 2, 1, you get minus 1, minus 1 plus 2, so you get 1. You get 1 plus 1, that's 2, and then you get minus 2 plus 1, so that's minus 1, and that is indeed minus 1 times the original vector, so this is indeed an eigenvector with eigenvalue minus 1, as we wanted. Okay. So final eigenvector to calculate uh, is the one for the eigenvalue 2. Okay, so for lambda 3 equals 2, the equation is then 1 minus 2, so it's minus 1 minus 1, 0. Then it's... Oh, where's it gone? Sorry. Then it's minus 1 minus 2, mi 1 minus 1, minus 2, 1, then it's 0, 1, minus 1, times by that eigenvector gives you 0. Okay, so regards reducing this, so what should we do? Oh, we could make Hmm. We could make row 2, subtract row 1 from row 2, times row 1 by negative. Leave it at that for now, I think. Okay. Okay, so row 1 becomes 1, 1, 0. Row 2 becomes 0. Minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. Uh, the 1 stays there, and you have 0, 1, minus 1 there. Okay, cool. So now we can do row 3, can, row 1 can be, row 2 can be added to row 3. Row 2 can be times by a negative. Oh, and let's also do row 1 also plus row 2. Okay. I've run out of paper, so I need to make some new paper. want to make the paper the same size as the rest of the paper. Okay. So we were doing row one. To add to row one, we add row two. So you get one, zero, one. It times row two by negative one. Add to row three, add row two. So you get zero, zero, zero. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, so now we can read off the solutions. 
So, oh, it's even only of course. So this thing is satisfied by, for example, if V3 is free variable down there in the third row, the second row is the same as that, and the first row is minus one, one set. Okay, minus one, one, one. Let's check that. Minus one, one, one. Okay, that notification, what do you get? You get. Minus one, minus one, minus two. Um, two, no, sorry, one plus one, two. Uh, one plus one, two. Yes, that is indeed two times the original vector. So this is also, this is correct eigenvector with eigenvalue of two. Okay, so we've got our eigenvectors, okay, and our eigenvalues. I'm sure they're correct. Now, what were, what were we trying to do again? We were trying to, we were doing all this so that we could orthogonally diagonalize this matrix A. So now we need to, we need to make sure that those, those vectors are, are um, orthogonal to each other. Um, but I think they are because they are, I think they are automatically because they are the eigenvectors of a symmetric matrix with distinct eigenvalues. Um, but I'm very tired, so I've temporarily forgotten whether or not that's the case. So let me check that they actually are orthogonal. Okay, so we want to check what the inner product of V1 and V2 is. So V1 is 1, 0, 1. So you can get minus 1 plus 1, which is 0, yes. Um, V1, V3. So V1 was 1, 0, 1. V3 is minus 1, 1, 1, yes. So you get 0 for that one as well. And then finally V2 by V3. So V2 is minus 1, minus 2, 1. Minus 2... What? Minus two, oh, minus one, minus two, one. Minus one, minus two, one. Okay. Minus one, minus two, one. So you get, the order doesn't matter for real inner products, of course. So you get one minus two plus one. Yes, you get zero. Okay. So they are orthogonal. Okay. So we don't need to orthogonalize them. We just need to normalize them by dividing each of it by, by their um, norms. Okay. So, and then we're going to put them in a matrix Q. But we want to choose the order of the vectors so that they make a right-handed coordinate system so that our Q is just a rotation, not a rotation and a reflection. So for that, we need to look at the determinant of... Now line these vectors up, uh, V1, V2, V3. So V1 was 1, 0, 1, of course. Mm, V2 is minus 1, minus 2, 1. And V3 is minus 1, 1, 1. So you want to look at the determinant of that. And we want it to be positive. And if it's not positive, we're going to swap two of the vectors with each other to change the sign of the determinant. OK, so how to calculate determinant, this determinant? I like calculating determinants with Gauss reduction. So we can start off by doing row 3 minus row 1. It doesn't affect the determinants. You get 0 and then 1 minus, minus 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2. And one more, the other two there, and here you have, let's still have this. Okay. Now you could calculate this by expanding down the first column, and so you'll just end up with a cofactor, this cofactor. Okay. Uh, you can calculate this very simply. You're going to get minus 4 minus 2, which is minus 6. Oh dear, that's less than 0. Okay, so you want to swap the order then. So we'll let Q be, so that, what order should I put them in? So at the moment I've got them in, what the order I've, in terms of the eigenvalues, the order I've got them in is, I think eigenvalue of 1, minus 1, 2, right? Is that the order I've got them in? 2, minus 1, yeah, 1, minus 1, 2. So let me rather put them in in the order minus 1, 1, 2. That's nice, because then it's in ascending order. Okay, so uh, that means that the V1, that means the first column should be the second, should be the one with the eigenvalue of minus 1, which was, it's now called V2. So that's minus 1, minus 2, 1. Minus 1, minus 2, 
one. And the next column should be the thing with an eigenvalue of one, which was one zero one, I believe. Yes. And finally, we have the other one, which is minus one, one, minus one, one, one. So I know that that will have a positive determinant because its determinant will actually be six because we have, it'll be six because we swapped columns. Okay. Uh, and this corresponds to, a, would correspond to a D of minus one, one, two on the diagonal. And I put zeros elsewhere. Okay. I'm not doing that anymore. Okay, uh, but I want each column of this queue to actually be normal, to have a magnitude of one. So I need to divide each column by its norm. Oh, so the norm of the first column is one plus square root of four plus one, six, square root of six. So divide it by square root of six, square root of six, square root of six. Next one, square root of two, square root of two. Next one, square root of three, square root of three, square root of three. Okay, so that is our queue. Okay. Okay, Q and D. What are we doing now? I've forgotten what we're doing. We are trying to actively sketch this quadratic form. Okay. So we started out with saying we've got we have it in this form, okay. With that being A. Now we've got we make the substitution, okay? If we make the substitution mm, let's uh, you know little x equal q times big X. So the big X is our new variables. And so the equation becomes uh, q big X, that all thing transpose, times by a times by q x equals uh, still a zero there. Okay. Now that means Oh, sorry. That's the same as if you do x transpose times q transpose because it's transpose of a product uh, flips the order. And then that's the same as if you have x transpose times d times x equals 0 because that's the orthogonally diagonalized. That's why we did that. And that is the same as, so what's d? d is minus 1, 1, 2. So we have x squared. What, sorry, my, no, we have minus x squared plus y squared plus 2z squared equals 0. OK. Now, I think, in general, these equations on the quadratic forms thing, they usually have just one. They usually have it. They don't put an equal to 0. They just rather take that thing to the other side. So it will be more like that on the, on the, on the quadratic sheet, on the quadratic form sheet. OK, so what is it? it's like squared plus a squared equals a squared. OK, so let's look at the quadratic form sheet oh, down here. OK, so we're looking for squared plus a squared equals a squared. Squared plus squared equals no. Yeah, square plus square equals a squared. Anything else like that? No. No. Okay, so what we have is an elliptic cone. Okay, on this sheet, this is, I think this is always the little, the little z direction. Uh, sorry, I think this is always the little z direction. Um, yes, because when, when z is constant, the cross section is an ellipse. So cross section like that, you get an ellipse. Okay. So we had an elliptic cone. But I think what did we have? We had like um, x squared. No, we didn't have x squared. What did we have again? We have y squared plus two z squared equals x squared. So our elliptic cone is orientated along, along the x axis, or the big x axis, and the elliptical shape is on the y z plane. The ellipses are on parallel to the yz thing. Okay, let's draw it. So first of all, we need our standard axes. So our x, standard xyz axes. So standard are three axes. So we're going to have something for z. And 
something for uh, X or Y, I can't remember now. Uh, maybe for X or Y. Uh, right handed coordinate system, so this is the X direction, this is the Y direction, that's the Z direction. Okay, now the, the big X that points in the direction of the first column of Q, right? So what was the first column of Q? Minus 1, minus 2, 1. What's it? Sorry? Minus 1, minus 2, 1. So minus 1, minus 2, 1. Yeah. So it's like in this direction. Okay, that's the x direction. Uh, then the y direction, the second column, 1, 0, 1. It's like, um, how far did I go for 1? It's like 1, 0, 1. So it's like up there. That's the y direction. That's a right angle between those two, of course. Okay, and then the z direction is minus 1, 1, 1. Minus one, one, one. So it's like up there somewhere. That's Z. Okay. Ugh. Mm. Put it like it's like up there somewhere. That's right angle, of course. Go, go, go. Okay, that's the big Z direction. Okay, that's right angle. That yeah, that's right handed coordinate system still. Like by design, that's how we that's why we swap the order of the matrices, swap the order of the eigenvectors. And now, so it's along the x axis. Okay, but now where's the in what direction is it? Is the ellipse wide in the y direction or wide in the z direction? Okay. Well, we have 2 times the z squared. So the z squared, the z squared can be smaller to, when the y is 0, the z squared can be small compared to when the z is 0. Okay, but it is now holding x constant. So that means it's, it's wide in the y direction and narrow in the z direction. Okay, so first of all, so to do this, draw this, we want to draw an ellipse on the Ellipse, an ellipse that's parallel to the yz plane, that's wide in the y direction and narrow in the z direction. Okay, so let me try and draw that uh, down here. Okay, so it'll be something like like that. Okay, and then it's a cone, elliptical cone. So of course it goes through like that, and it goes through like that, didn't like those lines at all, let's try again, uh, I don't think it's, just, it's not centered enough, let me try again, um, so what's it, wide in the y direction, narrow in the z direction, so it's actually, uh, it needs to be more like, like that, right, nah, more like, let me try this, this is, this is the y direction. This is my z direction. So it needs to be like, hmm. needs to be something like, oh, like that. I think that's gonna be good enough. Okay. Let me erase these lines. No. Okay. Uh, so it's cone, so we've got to put this line like that. It's this line like, oh. Line like that. Okay. Now we complete the ellipse up here, like that. This is like behind, so I'm just putting in a dotted line to indicate you can't really see that through the surface of the cone. Okay, and um, that's it. Maybe I should put some, some more like lines on it to like 
bring out its shape. Okay, I don't think I'm able to do any better than that. Okay, that's the end of the question, right? We just had to, we just had to do the sketch. Yeah.